Look at the Sinaiticus. I never could in Bible college or at Fuller Seminary in the 1980s. Almost no one could, just about anywhere, until these last few years. The Codex Sinaiticus was the book that tipped the balance away from the historical preserved Bible and changed hundreds of scriptures in crucial places. Yeah, I know. Codex Sinaiticus is the reason for hundreds of Bible-doubting footnotes. So please take a good look at it. Go to codexsinaiticus.org, click See the Manuscript, and look at it. And when you look at it, look carefully. Notice all those corrections. The missing words, phrases, verses, not in the New Testament only, but also in the Old Testament. It's all over the place. Don't take my word for it. Don't just trust me. Don't trust your professors either. Look at the pictures yourself. Click from page to page, book to book. See it for yourself. This is the first time non-scholars have been able to. And you have no idea how long it's going to last. And then, when you have spent some time doing that, ask yourself this. Did the copyists believe that they had the words of God? How could they? They were marking it up and correcting it all over the place. So if they didn't believe they had the words of God, then why should I? Sometimes simple questions lead to powerful answers. Do you want to ask some questions with me? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. When you were growing up, did you ever say, if I were king? Well, what if you were the head of a giant empire? And what if that empire had pagans and Jewish people and a bunch of different groups called Christians? How would you unite your empire? Well, I can tell you what Constantine wanted. He wanted to unite the Roman Empire in the early 300s AD. As emperor, he was the Pontifex Maximus, the guy who sets the religious calendar. That made him the guy who had the emperor, empire united in its national holidays and sacrifice schedule. Then he had himself declared to be the Bishop of Bishops, basically the first pope, that meant he could try to unite these Christian groups as well. In 324 AD, Constantine laid the plans for a new capital city for his empire. He picked Byzantium, the border city at the northwestern part of Turkey on the east side of his empire, and he named it after himself, Constantinople. Six years later, in 330 AD, Constantine finished it and moved his stuff from Rome to Constantinople. The next year, in 331 AD, he summoned Eusebius of Caesarea, his lapdog, and commanded him to get together 50 Bibles. As I read to you a few vlogs ago, listen again to Constantine's words. Quote, We make known to you that you are to commission 50 volumes which are to be bound in leather, easy to read and for convenience portable. They are to be written by craftsmen who are both calligraphers and used to working accurately. They are to be copies of the divine scriptures, which you well know must be available for reading in church. And then Eusebius wrote, we sent him threes and fours in curiously worked bindings. What did Constantine want? How many of you think Constantine wanted 50 different disagreeable Bibles? Think about it. That story is still around today. Some of you have professors in Bible college or seminary like I did 
who will tell you that Sinaiticus and Vaticanus were likely two of Constantine's 50 Bibles. Look here, even the 50 Bibles of Constantine Wikipedia page shows what images? Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. Check it for yourself. Ask yourself, was this Constantine's grand scheme to unite his empire with 50 Bibles that didn't agree with each other? Does that story that professors tell to this day even make sense? Remember, Constantine said they are to be copies of the divine scriptures. I think he just wanted 50 copies of the same Bible. It makes sense. If I were king, emperor, and 50 different Bibles were sent to me, I'd say, you had just one job. <laughs> and then I'd fire them. I would say, which one's the right one? Which one do I trust? Which one is the one God promised? And if they said all of them, I'd say, you mean your God can't give me just one single copy of the Word of God that I, the Emperor, can totally trust? Who can I trust then? And do you know what they'd have to say? A priest, a pope, or a scholar, or a set of scholars. They'd be telling me to put my trust in man, that I couldn't just trust in God and his words. Because if a man convinced me not to trust God, then all I'd have less to, left to trust in would be that man. Remember, the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus don't agree with each other. They only have two basic things in common. One, they had the Apocrypha, in other words of men, added as if they were scripture, that raises their value, but it lowers the value of actual scripture. And two, they disagree with the preserved texts which we find in the King James and other preserved Bibles. But they also disagree with each other, which means you can't go to them or either one of them as your absolute authority, no matter how hard you try. I know. I tried for years. I trusted my professors. My own doctrines began to change and waver as I became my own textual critic, weighing the various readings. To my professors, it meant giving more weight to what disagrees with the King James and other preserved Bibles, and less weight to whatever agrees with the King James, even if there are a thousand of them. I read Metzger's Discussion Points, Textual Commentary to the Greek New Testament, and the committee votes, yes, they decided scripture by voting on the readings based on textual criticism and their own prejudices. If their goal was faith, they failed both then and now. But if their goal was never-ending doubt, they succeeded. Remember that quote I gave you from Kearsop Lake who said, quote, in spite of the claims of Westcott and Hort and of von Soden, we do not know the original form of the Gospels, and it is quite likely that we never shall. He wrote that after he had photographed Sinaiticus starting in 1910. Did the Sinaiticus lead him to faith or doubt? Doubt. Let's go to another Constantine. Constantine Tischendorf. His college professor convinced him that he didn't have God's preserved words. So he wanted to find them somewhere hidden in a monastery in Greek. He wrote to his fiancée, Angelica, I am confronted by a sacred task, the struggle to regain the original form of the New Testament. 
he believed he had lost God's words. He said he wanted the oldest at best. Instead, he found a jumbled mess. At best, he found a draft copy, and at worst, he found a counterfeit. And that's only if he did find it and didn't come up with it himself. Let's go back to that first Constantine. Why would the emperor want a bunch of Bibles that were not the same, that disagreed in important points, and that had piles of erasing and correcting and rewriting and notes and excuses? Does that make sense to you? If you were the emperor and wanted to unite your empire, you wouldn't want 50 disagreeing Bibles. You would want 50 carefully prepared, skillfully executed, identical Bibles, wouldn't you? That is what Constantine the emperor asked for. What was Constantine Tischendorf looking for? What did this Constantine want? Eusebius wrote, quote, We sent him threes and fours in curiously worked bindings. What could that mean, threes and fours? It could mean sending three or four Bibles at a time. Sending three or four books that add up to one Bible, one for law, one for prophets, one for writings, and one for New Testament. Could mean three or four Bibles to a shipping crate, or written in three or four columns to a page. Did Tischendorf invent that view? He sure made it popular. I can see him thinking. Let's see. Vaticanus has three columns. Maybe I can find one with four columns. In my four years of going to monasteries in Europe, I've found, added, or taken away words and phrases and verses, and I've written them down. Maybe I can find another older Bible that has those same added to or taken away words and verses. I'll be famous. He really was trying to make a brand new Bible that would make him famous. Read his biographies. Nobody disputes that fact. Isn't it amazing that in that jumbled mess he called the Sinaiticus, he found exactly that? He found the same unique readings he'd been finding in other manuscripts, but in one sort of Bible. Imagine that. What a coincidence. And he found them right after he decided there had to be one more Bible for him to find, since the others... The Alexandrinus, Vaticanus, and Ephraimia Rescriptus, that rewritten one that he had just deciphered, were already well known. Imagine that. And he found them in the first place he went, after he saw the Pope and Jesuit Cardinal Mai in the Vatican the year before in 1843, and then raised some money. Imagine that. And he found them in a place so remote that everyone would be forced to believe his own testimony, since there were no easy-to-produce witnesses to verify what he said. Imagine that. Maybe I should start all over again and ask, if I were a scholar, and I wanted to produce a fake Bible that would make me famous, what would I do? Maybe that will get me closer to the truth. What did Constantine want? I'm so glad I don't have to worry about whether Tischendorf was deluded, a liar, a con, or incredibly naive. I'm glad I don't have to search to the ends of the earth to find the words of God hidden somewhere. God made sure his words were right here in front of me. Proverbs 17, 24. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Or maybe a monastery. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.